I'd like to show you by way of two short video clips part of my collection of vintage radio and television receivers that I amassed during my 40 years in the radio and television trade. They are all 405 line receivers designed for the British television system A that was transmitted from Alexandra Palace in North London. The vision frequencies were 45 megacycles vision and 41.5 sound. It was the world's first television station to transmit a regular service to the public. That was in the afternoons and evenings. The transmissions continued until September 1939 when the outbreak of the Second World War and didn't continue until 1946. From 1946 to 1985 there was an unbroken period of transmission. Um, we started to transmit BBC Two in 1964 on 625 lines and of course that's was the start of the decline of the 405 line system. It continued until, as I said, 1985. Most people used it up till the late 70s uh, and then it tailed off fairly rapidly with a final closure. These receivers are all in working order. Uh, you can now show transmissions via a standards converter. That's an electronic device that will convert the 625 line transmission from either a DVD, videotape or live transmission to a 405 line signal without modification. So you can plug it straight into the aerial socket without modifying the set and watch TV as it used to be. I'll run the camera around the workshop and let you see in detail a, f a few of the receivers with a sort of um, minor description of what they are. If you have any queries or would like to know more about a particular receiver, if you'll leave me a comment, I'll attempt to answer your questions. I hope you enjoy it. Right, we've got a Marconi 10-inch model here with radio. Not one of the best models. It was fitted with the EMI 1807 series chassis that was a bit of a disaster. It was the first ACDC receiver that was made by this company uh, in 1949. It would operate on AC mains or DC mains. We did have a lot of DC mains around in those days, but it was not a complete success. They had uh, many, many teething troubles with it and uh, created quite a few problems for their owners, uh, which they never really got over. Um, they ceased television production in the mid-50s, passing it over to Thorne, because I think they just about had enough of um, you know, designing receivers. But uh, there we go. It's just whole part of the history. Now, I'll just take it down so you can see the actual... It's a console cabinet. A bit restricted for space in here, but I'll do my best. That's the TV24 made by Bush, 12-inch console. Very, very nice receiver. Uh, they made a whole series of these, the, t the little 9-inch models, 12-inch table models and the 12-inch console sold in very large numbers, very, very reliable. Many of these survived up until the late 1960s, even early 1970s if they carried on working. People were very pleased with them. Right, we'll go along a little bit. That is an HMV 1805 10-inch console very much a deluxe set of its time, main ZHT, uh, very reliable set, gave a brilliant little picture on its TA10 EMI tube. Right, we'll move along a little bit. Now that is the Marconi version of it with a radio receiver on the top. I'll remove the records there so you can see the radio receiver. Very good quality radio receiver and a 10 inch screen again a very much a luxury item very expensive in its day probably over a hundred pounds and uh, it wasn't something that the ordinary man in the street would be able to buy underneath that a 14 inch Pi V14C console um, that gave line sync troubles mainly due to the capacitors of the day uh, capacitors were always the let down we only had oil paper and wax and tar basically as insulating materials most of which absorbed moisture so over a period of time that was always a let down better capacitors were available but they were very expensive and cost is always of priority of course in mass production so you know we did have to suffer the capacitor problem 
but uh, once you've you service these and fit modern components in they're surprisingly reliable such a pity we didn't have them at the time right, we'll go along one of the top shelves now and have a look at some of the early TVs that is an Echo TMB272 9 inch receiver mains battery portable it's all valve uses a vibrator to produce the HT current needed to drive it about 200 volts from a 12 volt car battery we really need a lorry battery for that because it's about 6 amps but it would run for a good few hours on a big battery and provided TV to people for the first time that didn't have mains electricity. Next to it we have the little Perdio of 1962, all transistor, one of the first, uh, sold in very large numbers. The Perdio company didn't survive unfortunately, they probably made products rather too well. Uh, they had very good um, technical design team at the factory, made some very good transistor radios, but I think going into television probably was just too much of an expense for them an outlay of development and the company folded soon after that TV was produced. Great pity because it works extremely well. Could have been uh, something quite uh, big for them if they'd managed to continue. All right, next door to the little Perdio we've got the Pi LV30. A video clip is on the site if you want to see more details of that. The little 9 inch set 1950. Next door to that the Ferguson 941T 1949. Uh, brilliantly made little set, little TRF set London tuned, uh, very bright little picture on it, uh, simple, straightforward, easy to service, it laid the foundations really for Ferguson, uh, Ferguson's future in TV which was probably one of the largest in this country, they had many rental outlets under the Thorn name and DER and sitting on top of it is the little converter to get ITV that came along in 1955, a little band 3 box there the band 3 signal came out at band 1 and you just fed it in the aerial socket did cause a few little patterning problems but you know that's all part of the course with conversions well that concludes the first half of my radio and television collection if you found it interesting perhaps you'd like to see the second half in part 2 I'll see you there